Hi, it's Dr. Scott. And welcome to the, the very last installment of our Cyberqueer Voyage. And appropriately enough, I've chosen some science fiction for us this time, but I hope you'll also think of it as um, eye candy. Um, not in that sense, but in the sense of being some very easy and fun reading here at the end of the quarter, looking forward into the future and into a future in which the, the safety and survival of all species, not just our own species, is at, is at risk. That is, in fact, the situation on the planet. And that's why the theme um, for this last voyage is something called cli-fi. That's a, a shorthand term for climate fiction, which is an emerging and important genre. Those of you that take my other classes are well aware that I'm quite obsessed with this. Um, and I do write and publish and give national talks about it as well. So uh, basically, I'll admit that one of my obsessions, which is cli-fi, is meeting another of my obsessions, which is LD LGBTQ lit, um, for this very final, this very final and candy-fied uh, voyage and look into the future. Now, let me give you a quick preview. Um, both of the stories that we're reading are part of this emerging cli-fi genre. I gave you a reading about what cli-fi is. But there's a sub-sub-genre of cli-fi, which is also a sub-sub-genre of cyberpunk, which is a sub-genre, which has its own sub-genre called biopunk. Biopunk being the, the fictional format in which sci-fi characters biohack and bioengineer their way into some sort of often apocalyptic future but which, to be honest, is usually dominated by heteronormative, macho, often adolescent males who are just biohacking for the, for the fun of it and the testosterone rush of it and kind of playing in a Frankensteinian way with uh, the mechanisms of reproduction and evolution. Solar Punk, which came along just, I think, as recently as about 2014 and was invented and still takes its home here in San Francisco, Solar Punk says, well, what if we used all these tools of biohacking and genetic engineering, which, of course, the Bay Area is home to right now with Genentech and et cetera. What if we use them not only to bioengineer our way into a brighter climate future in the face of apocalyptic uh, threats to the planet from climate change, but what if, what if, the, what if the protagonists were themselves genderqueer? And we're not part of the gender binary and we're not simply reinforcing the same old industrial capitalist macho and patriarchal cultures which is as all of us who love sci-fi know uh, with wonderful exceptions such as the left hand of darkness so often a part of the sci-fi voyages often in a, in a sort of disappointing sense so you'll be reading about an insurance sales person not salesman who is non-gender binary, non-heteronormative, and finding out how she, she does that is her pronoun, how she voyages into this future. Um, you'll find her selling insurance first in Galveston, Texas, which then quickly goes underwater because sea levels are rising and because megastorms are coming. And then she washes up in Florida, which in the Everglades, where she and a bunch of her solar punking, uh, it's genetic engineering, biohacking friends get together to, to create a wonderful utopian kind of uh, village, all of their own. But then once again, the inevitable storms come. This is a, a normal feature of climate fiction, by the way. The storms are already coming. Um, as I speak, in 2018, scientists are debating whether we need a Category 6 because Category 5 isn't strong enough anymore. So cast yourself 20, 30 years in the future and that's what you get. Anyway, I want to know what you think of this cyberqueer character who voyages into the climate future with her solar punk buddies. And then um, I have another insurance salesman. Now this is accidental. I didn't do this on purpose. But our other protagonist is in a novel called Finitude. And in Finitude, the detective character, once again, often in sci-fi, in general sci-fi, uh, such as do androids dream of electric sheep. Uh, often the character is very heteronormative, but also a detective. So we have a non-heteronormative, gay, queer detective, heartbroken one, I might add, not too much of a spoiler, who's struggling against various government plots 
um, and various, uh, well, in a dystopic future, uh, trying to find uh, not only the pieces of his shattered heart, but to keep the planet from falling apart at the same time. So once again, um, let me know what, what the emotional trajectory of our insurance sales person's uh, life is like. And that will be our farewell. Um, I will then turn you loose to go on your own voyages to write your own, uh, your own queer fiction, your own climate fiction, to be the literary critics uh, and the literary readers of the future, uh, and to to take us together into into not only the climate future but the gender queer future. Uh, bon voyage. <laughs>